We are reading Ramona and her father. This is chapter three, and it must be in the fall of this story because this is called The Night of the Jack-O-Lantern. Please pass the tommy toes, said Ramona, hoping to make someone in the family smile. She felt good when her father smiled as he passed her the bowl of stewed tomatoes. He smiled less and less as the days went by and he had not found work. Too often he was just plain cross. Ramona had learned not to rush home from school and ask, Did you find a job today, Daddy? Mrs. Quimby always seemed to look anxious these days, either over the cost of groceries or money the family owed. Beezus had turned into a regular old grouch because she dreaded creative writing and because she reached at that difficult age that Mrs. Quimby was always talking about, although Ramona found this hard to believe. Even Picky Picky was not himself. He lashed his tail and he stalked angrily away from the dish whenever Beezus served him Puss Putty, the cheapest brand of cat food that Mrs. Quimby could find in the market. All of this worried Ramona. She wanted her father to smile and joke and her mother to look happy, her sister to be cheerful, and Picky Picky to eat his food, wash his whiskers, and purr the way he used to. And so, Mr. Quimby was saying, at the end of the interview for the job, the man said he would let me know if anything turned up. Mrs. Quimby sighed. <sighs> Let's hope you hear from him. Oh, and by the way, the car has been making a funny noise, a sort of a tappity-tappity sound. Oh, it's Murphy's Law, said Mr. Quimby. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Ramona knew her father was not joking this time. Last week, when the washing machine refused to work, the Quimbys had been horrified by the size of the repair bill. I like Tommy Toes, said Ramona, hoping her little joke would work the second time. This was not exactly true. She didn't really like them, but she was willing to sacrifice truth for a smile. And since nobody paid any attention to her, Ramona spoke louder as she lifted the bowl of stewed tomatoes. Does anybody want Tommy Toes? She asked, and then the bowl tipped. Mrs. Quimby silently reached over and wiped spilled juice from the table with her napkin. Crestfallen. Ramona set the bowl down. Nobody had smiled. Ramona, said Mr. Quimby, my grandmother used to say the first time is funny, the second time is silly, and the third time is a spanking. Ramona looked down at her placemat. Nothing seemed to go right lately. Picky Picky must have felt the same way. He sat down beside Beezus and meowed his crossest meow. Can you make a cross meow? Like, meow! Make a meow like that? Mr. Quimby lit a cigarette and asked his oldest daughter, Haven't you fed that cat yet? Beezus rose to clear the table. It wouldn't do any good. He hasn't eaten since breakfast. He won't eat that cheap, disgusting puss putty. Too bad about him. Mr. Quimby blew a cloud of smoke towards the ceiling. He goes next door and mews as if we never give him anything to eat, said Beezus. It's so embarrassing. He'll just have to learn to eat what we can afford, said Mr. Quimby, or we'll get rid of him. <gasps> this statement shocked Ramona. Picky Picky had been a member of their family since she was born. Well, I don't blame him, said Beezus picking up the cat and pressing her cheek against his fur. Puss putties! Stinks! Mr. Quimby ground out his cigarette. Guess what? said Mrs. Quimby, as if to change the subject. Howie's grandmother drove out to visit her sister, who lives on a farm, and her sister sent in a lot of pumpkins for jack-o'-lanterns for the neighborhood children. Mrs. Kemp gave us a big one. It's down in the basement, waiting to be carved. <gasps> me, 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 cried Ramona. Let me get it! 
Let's give it a really scary face, said Beezus, no longer being difficult. I'll have to sharpen my knife, said Mr. Quimby. Run along and bring it up, Ramona, said Mrs. Quimby with a real smile. Relief flooded through Ramona. Her family had returned to normal. What is normal, hey guys? She snapped on the basement light, thumped down the stairs, and there in the shadow of the furnace pipes, which reached out like ghostly arms, was a big, round pumpkin. Ramona grasped its, stra its scratchy stem, found the pumpkin too big to lift by the stem, and then she bent over and hugged it on with both arms and raised it from the cement floor. The pumpkin was heavier than she had expected, and she must not let it drop and smash all over the concrete floor. Need some help, Ramona? Mrs. Quimby called down the stairs. I can do it! Ramona felt for each step with her feet and emerged victorious into the kitchen. Have you ever carried a pumpkin? They can be really heavy, can't they? And one time I picked one up by the stem and the stem broke off and the pumpkin did smash. So I think Ramona's being smart. Hmm. That is a big one. Mr. Quimby was sharpening his jackknife on a wet stone while Beezus and her mother hurried through the dishes. A pumpkin that size would cost a lot of money at the store, Mrs. Quimby remarked. Let's give it eyebrows like last year, said Ramona. And ears, said Beezus. And lots of teeth, added Ramona. There would be no jack-o'-lantern with one tooth and three triangles for eyes and a nose in the Quimby's front window on Halloween. Mr. Quimby was the best pumpkin carver on Clickety-Clack Street, and everybody knew it. Hmm, let's see now. Mr. Quimby studied the pumpkin, turning it to find the best side for the face. I think the nose should go right about here. And with a pencil, he sketched a nose-shaped nose, not a triangle, while his daughters leaned on their elbows to watch. Shall we make it smile or frown, he asked. What would you pick, smile or frown? Hmm. Smile, said Ramona, who had had enough of frowning. Frown, said Beezus. So the mouth turned up on one side, and down on the other side. And the eyes were sketched and the eyebrows. Very expressive, said Mr. Quimby. Something between a leer and a sneer. A leer and a sneer, what does that mean? He put a circle around the top of the pumpkin and lifted it off for a lid. And without being asked, Ramona found a big spoon for scooping out all the seeds. Picky Picky came into the kitchen to see if something besides Puss Putty had been placed in his dish. When he found that it had not, he paused, sniffed the unfamiliar pumpkin smell, and with his tail twitching angrily, he stalked out of the kitchen. Ramona was glad Beezus didn't notice. If we don't let a candle burn the jack-o'-lantern, we could turn it into pumpkin pie, said Mrs. Quimby. I could even freeze some of the pumpkin for Thanksgiving. Mr. Quimby began to whistle as he carved with skill and care, first a mouthful of tea, each one neat and square, and then eyes jagged, and then ferocious eyebrows. He was working on the two ears, shaped like little question marks, when Mrs. Quimby said, Bedtime, Ramona! I'm going to stay up until Daddy finishes! Ramona informs her family. No if, ands, or buts. Run along and take your bath, said Mrs. Quimby. Then you can watch a while longer. Because her family was happy once more, Ramona did not protest. She returned quickly, however, still damp under her pajamas, to see what her father had thought of next. Hair, that's what he had thought of next. Hmm. He could carve hair into the pumpkin because it was so big. 
He cut a few C-shaped curls around the hole at the top of the pumpkin before he reached inside and hollowed out a candle holder in the bottom. There, he said, and rinsed his jackknife under the kitchen faucet. A work of art. Mrs. Quimby found a candle stub, inserted it into the pumpkin and lit it, and set the lid on place. Ramona switched off the light. The jack-o'-lantern leered and sneered with a flickering flame. So leer and sneer, we already wondered about that. What do you think it means? I think it kind of means like kind of like staring at you with like this kind of scary little smile. Oh, Daddy! Ramona threw her arms around her father. It's the wickedest jack-o'-lantern in the world! Mr. Quimby kissed the top of Ramona's head. Thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Now run along to bed. And we'll stop there.